Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 to 6, reading, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And he carried me in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a gold a cup in hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us all turn to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we bow before you, giving you thanks for this time that we can study your word. Lord, we pray that you use BBK to strengthen our understanding of the end times and build convictions in our heart. And we pray that you use it to build a strong foundation for your church, that generations after generations, Lord, it will be sound and it will stand for the truth. We pray for the young ones in our midst as they hear all this. Lord, may they take it to heart, and may they grow up, Lord, not to be deceived, but to defend your faith instead. So be in our midst. We do pray for cleansing and washing of our sins. Once again, we ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's turn our BBK books to page um, 187. In the old book, 187 in the old book, 209 in the new book, 209 in the new book. Now, what are the movements that the Christian must be aware of, all right? You must be very conscious of these movements in the forehead, in the fore of your mind, all right? The, the organizations and the movements. So, what is the first one we studied about, which Roman, Roman Catholic Church, all right? It is huge in this world, but it is a false Christianity, right? Uh, what's the next one? Um, Anna, Anna Tiong? The ecumenical movement, all right? This ecumenical movement is what we have read in Revelation 17, where it wants to bring together, all right? It wants to bring together all the Christendom, false or true Christianity, as well as bring in the Roman Catholics and bring in um, all the false um, religions, all together, even the political realm, all right? So you read about this in Revelation chapter 17. This one whole ecumenical, um, filthy, uh, religiously filthy movement, okay? Now, who, what organization is, is promoting this movement? Um, Jonathan. Yes, Sylvia's brother, that Jonathan, yes. <laughs> The World Council of Churches, very good. The World Council of Churches. You see, a movement needs a body to move it forward. And it is the World Council of Churches. And you saw the website, you saw, their, you saw with your own eyes, their very website, all right? So I took you there on the internet. And you see, many churches today are part of that. Even churches that, well, very well known to us. Churches in Subiaco, churches um, down the road, is, is everywhere. Right? People are part of this movement. God says, come out from among them. Now then, we study about the charismatic movement. Now this is one big gel that will bring um, Protestants together and Roman Catholics together. All right? So we'll talk more about that next week. Now we come to this other movement called, look at your BBK books, page 187 in the old book, 209 in the new book. Now this movement that is called the Neo evangelical movement, neo-evangelical movement, all right? This is not a Chinese surname, all right? Neo. It is 
it means new, N-E-W, right? So um, it is a way, it is um, new. New means new evangelical movement. Now, what is this movement about? Now, first and foremost, um, look up here. Now, what are evangelicals? You have to understand that first. Because this is not evangelicals, these are new evangelicals. <clears throat> now, evangelicals is a term generally used to describe, well, conservative, um, sound, biblical um, Christianity, the people that belong to that, the evangelicals, all right? So, by and large, um, the idea is they are conservative, they, are, uh, they believe in the fundamentals of the faith. So, evangelicals usually used to describe that. Um, but what is new evangelical? Now, if you look at your BBK books, now, this is the most dangerous movement of all the above movements. We will see more next week, God willing. But remember, this is the most insidious, very, very dangerous, because it is not so much a movement, but it is a mindset. All right? Listen carefully. It is a mindset. This is a new evangelical movement, but what? Unlike the, um, uh, the ecumenical movement where there is a physical organization called the World Council of Churches pushing it forward, all right, pushing it forward. Now, this is a movement that is pushed forward, and this is the key thing that you must remember why it is so dangerous. It is not a physical body, but it's a mentality, a mindset that is pushing new evangelical movement across Christianity. Now, I want to repeat this because you have to understand why this is so dangerous. A mindset is more difficult to um, see, feel, identify with than a physical movement or physical organization like the World Council of Churches. It's a physical organization with physical um, 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 societies and all that, all right? Part of membership. But a movement can exist in you, can exist in a Christian without the Christian realizing it. So please remember that. That is why this is the most dangerous. It can be sitting right inside BPCWA. We are evangelicals, but there's maybe some of you who are new evangelicals in your heart, in your mindset. Do you belong to the, new, uh, the World Council of Churches? No, but you have a mindset that is new evangelical, all right? That is why it's very dangerous. It is already in many, many uh, fundamental churches already. Now, then we ask, what is this mindset? How did it start? How did it start? What is this new evangelical mindset? Now, look at your BBK books. How did it start? The movement was born officially in 1948 when Harold Okenga, so remember, remember, remember this name, all right? Harold Okenga was the father of the new evangelical movement. Now, he publicly declared that it was new evangelical when he spoke at Fuller Theological Seminary as their president. So, many of you are aware of this, this, um, this theological seminary, Fuller Theological Seminary. Some of you may even think it is conservative. Now, he, when he was the president there, he made a speech and he, it is at that time in 1948 that he came up with this term. I am not a, an evangelical anymore. I'm a new evangelical, all right? So he made that statement and that is where this new term started. A very famous speech. Now, what, did, what was he, uh, what drove him to say I'm a new evangelical? And not just an evangelical. Now, it was particularly, look at your BBK books, at the time of his first declaration, he's, oh sorry, Okenga was a fundamentalist before he became disillusioned with fundamentalism. Right, he became disillusioned. Nothing wrong with fundamentalism, please know that, all right? We studied the five fundamentals of the faith. Those are, those were the battles they fought then, that you must believe in this. If you say you are a Christian, you have to believe in all this. Right? That Jesus is God, that he came from heaven, that he came in the flesh, that his blood is what atones for our sin, his sacrifice using his own precious blood. 
and he died and he resurrected physically, born of a virgin, all right? So all these were things that if you deny, then you cannot say that you are a Christian. So he, he was a fundamentalist. But he says he was disillusioned with fundamentalism. Now, what was it about? And you have to ask yourself, are you also having this mindset? Now, because there were these fundamentals, and then there were, remember we studied the modernists, the liberals who, who were there, the people that, well, say the Bible is, is not the truth. There are other truths, all right? And they don't believe in the virgin birth. They don't believe in inspiration and preservation of the word. They don't believe in all this. And they don't believe in bodily resurrection as well. It's just a fable, just to teach you something. Moral, that's all. So there was, there are, maybe instead of talking, I try and draw, right? I hope it works, yes. Now, so they have, there is these evangelicals, all right, evangelicals, and then there are the modernists, the, the modernists, the liberals, and so on. Now, because of the five fundamentals, all right, the five fundamentals, there was a separation, a split in Christendom, Christianity. All right, if you can call this, you can't call this Christianity in reality. There was a split. Now, in his heart, you say, this is not good, all right? Yes, I may agree with these five, but these things causes a split. Now, this is the first thing you must begin to realize about the mentality, the mindset of a new evangelical. If you begin to think in your heart, yeah, these things are true. I agree it's in the Bible. You are evangelical in your thinking so far. But when the moment you feel, but I don't like these things because it splits. It splits churches. It splits friendships. It splits um, relationships. It splits Christendom. And therefore, it's not something that we really want to deal with or we can deal with it in other way. Now, listen carefully. All right? First, you don't like it. Now, an evangelical stands on the fundamentals of the faith. But you in your heart say, I don't like it. That is the first sign. Instead of saying, this is so important. We have to uphold this. We have to stand on this side. Because if we don't, then we will lose the truth in the next generation. But instead, you say, we, the second mentality is, we have to find a way to resolve this. Find a way to create unity. All right? So there's a new evangelical mindset. There is a truth, a, the truth that divides. Now, I have to find a way to, to unite, to unite. So he did not like biblical separation. That is the bottom line. Aero Okanga did not like biblical separation. He said, we must find a way to create unity. Now, he had, uh, so to speak, I don't even know whether to use this. He had a sincere intention, all right? He had a sincere intention to have unity, okay? But his idea of creating unity is this. Now, instead of, instead of biblical separation, instead of biblical separation, all right, instead of biblical separation, he wanted to use infiltration. Infiltration. Meaning to say this. He said, you know, we have this truth. We have this truth. But division is not good. Not, not fully wrong. But the way to solve this division is we should try and be part of their camp. Infiltrate them. Infiltrate means you go in there, act like them, or try to win them over, like pretend to be like them. Like it's almost as if you, you agree with them. Then slowly tell them the truth. All right? So he was very disillusioned because he said, because of these fundamentals of the faith, now there is a split in Christendom. He didn't like that. Now, Christian, you must remember, biblical separation is always for protection. The COVID-19 situation is the best example, all right? Some people really hate the, hate, 
hated the, the quarantine, hated this separation. They hate it. They hate it, all right? They say that this is not good. Now, it's the same in the spiritual realm. Even though it's for safety, for protection, they say, no, 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 not good. So he said, we must come over instead of obeying God in biblical separation. Biblical separation will help them. God's Bible is this. Come out from among them. We read in Revelation, come out from among them. Now, God's principle is always you come out, and then because you are separate, these fundamentals will remain very clear. When the fundamentals remain very clear, then you can help them. If the fundamentals are, are, are marred because you be part of them, you can never help anyone. So that is God's principle. But he thought that he is better, he's more intelligent than God. Say infiltration, infiltration. All right, so this is the mentality. Let us, let us work with other churches. No, no, no. I, we, we agree that, you know, they are, they are charismatics. They are not very sound in their, their doctrines and all that. Yeah, you know, but let us, let us work with them. Let us have dialogue with them. Let us talk to them, all right? Let us um, um, have spiritual activities together, all right? Worship together and so on. It's okay to visit their church, be part of their church, invite them over. That is how we win them over instead of separation. Now, what happened next is this. Look at your BBK books. Now, remember he was the president of an evangelical Bible college. Now, Okenga, now at the time of his first declaration, he still held on the fundamentals of the faith, except for biblical separation. So he did not like biblical separation. Truth always divides. Remember that. Now, he said that he would replace this doctrine with the doctrine of infiltration. That was his speech. Biblical separation doesn't work. Now, if you put it, paraphrase it in another, in another way, God, your command to come out from among them doesn't work, God. I have a better way to create unity. I have a better way to, to solve this problem, God, not by separation. Now, then next, look at your BBK books. Now, soon after that, Okenga said, that he believed in theistic evolution and the local flood theory. Now, look up here. When he thought, I can infiltrate, I can change their thinking, he believed that biblical separation is not the way, is to go in there, be part of them, and work with them and change their thinking. But very quickly, very quickly, he started to be influenced by them. And he started to believe in theistic evolution. We studied what is theistic evolution, right? Maybe I'll ask very quickly. Um, Isaac, what is theistic evolution? Eh, sorry, the, uh, theistic evolution. All right, young ones, you must know this term. Huh? Caleb. Very good. Theistic evolution, theistic is about God. God used evolution to create this world. So Isaac, what did God use to create this world? How many days? Six, all right. Six days. Six days. Not billions and billions of years through evolution. Now, evolution is a denial of God as the omnipotent creator. All right? So, the modernists, the liberals, they do not believe in the Genesis account. Now, churches that feel, you know, can, you can attend Bible colleges that teach you about God created through evolution and all that. All these are fine. The Genesis account is just a, a fable and all that. Now, if you continue in such churches and you feel that such churches are, well, you know, anyway, let's go in there and try and change them and let's worship with them. It's dangerous. That was his mentality. Because God knows Separation is for your protection. When you choose to do otherwise, you are putting yourself in danger. You will change. And that's exactly what happened to him when he disobeyed God's way. Why is biblical separation, I always say, called out in our church's constitution? There are so many things, so many doctrines. 
we dedicate one whole section to biblical separation. If you don't agree with it, then don't be a member. Do you know why? Because it is very dangerous to have you as a member. You are welcome to worship here, all right? To learn. And we pray that you will change. But if you don't believe in biblical separation, you will be the new evangelical mindset in the church. You will still think it's okay, it's okay, we can support them, we can be part of them, just secretly. Very soon, other Christians will follow your way. Biblical separation is God's formula, all right? Don't think that you are wiser than God. It's okay, that kind of thing. They are also doing God's work. We will study more of this, all right? So this was what sparked this whole thing, and he changed. You will change. Please do not think you will not change. Please do not think that you can change them. You can only change them from outside. Not by supporting them, being part of them, being supportive of them. You cannot. You will change. Now, if you think that you are better than Harold Okenga, who was a great theologian, if you think that you're better than Harold Okenga, who was so great that he, they made him the fuller theological seminary president, if you think that you're greater than him and you won't change, then you have to see history. Even he changed. So please know that mentality. Eh? First is truths, where truth divide, not very nice. Let's find ways to work together. Let's find ways to change them, but not biblical separation way. You are a new evangelical in mindset. It began there. It began there. Now, what are <clears throat> the characteristics of this mindset? Now, turn your, turn to your BBK books. Now, this movement has taken the evangelical world by storm, by storm. After 50 years of infiltration, this movement is found in practically every fundamental and seminary, fundamental church, seminary, and Bible college. It is there. Now, do you understand why this is so much more fearsome than the World Council of Churches, than the charismatic movement? Because this is in, look up here, oh, I'm sorry, this is now in Bible colleges, all right? This is now in um, seminaries, all right, seminaries, all right? Uh, this is, then when, it, when they are in Bible colleges and seminaries, it will go to the church. Why? Because pastors come from there. Well, lay people who take Bible, Bible study courses from them, they began to change. So, it's a man, mindset, mindset. Don't think just because this church is not a charismatic church, then it is safe. No, it is a mindset of truth divides. Truth divides, all right? It is found even in many BP churches today. Don't think that, all BPs are BPs, all right? Please remember that. There are many BP churches in Perth, all right? Um, in, in Australia, in Singapore. They may say they're BP, but they're new evangelical in mindset. They work with people that deny the word of God, right? Today, I, I read, I see Bible BP churches in Australia inviting people from Bible colleges like the Bob Jones University to speak at their, at their church camps, at their church pulpit. Bible Presbyterian Church in Australia. Why? Why is that wrong? This, this university is one of the um, leading universities that attacks the King James Bible. You see, it's that mentality. Let's work together. Let's work together. Let's not have biblical separation. Now, back to this. What is the mindset that then began to build. So first is, separation is not good. Then it is, let's try and find ways to support them, work together, and hopefully change them. That is the first two mindsets. Now, it will lead to this. Look at your BBK books, page 188 in the old book, 209 in the new book. Now, what is the mindset? First, it is a mindset of compromise. It is a mindset of compromise. The opposite of compromise is separation. It's a mindset of compromise. Now, look up here. You have to understand this. God took a lot of pain in the Old Testament to teach biblical separation to the point where he will make them say, you cannot wear clothes with mixed materials. Not that the mixed materials is wrong. To the point to teach the people, his people, that when you put on clothes every day, 
even that must remind you about biblical separation. What you can eat, what you cannot eat, was about separation, clean from unclean, all right? It was to teach them those principles. Because if Israel, if Israel compromises, instead of separating and be a bright light, it will become dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And if Israel fail, instead of separating and be a bright, clear light, they became a dark light, a false light. Then there were, the world will not know the truth. So when it was Israel, it was the only um, nation that had God's truth and they were supposed to shine clearly separately. No compromise. So it was so important. Today, it is the church. It is the church. That's why in the New Testament, it's written very clear, come out from among them, touch not their unclean things. Very clear. Because the moment you as a Christian compromise, think, have a compromising mindset, the moment the church has a compromising mindset, it is finished. It is the beginning of Harrow or Kanga downslide. What will be the downslide of the thinking of compromise? Now look, look at your BBK books. It will naturally lead to this. This mindset, their motto is love at any cost. And the most important doctrine in the Bible is saving souls. So first one, first mindset, love, love at any cost. Means unity is unloving to separate. It's unloving not to support their Christian work. It's unloving not to be um, um, working with them. It's unloving. The world will see us to be unloving. So because of that, when he moved over, he basically felt it's unloving to separate. So love at all costs. And the most important doctrine is salvation. Now first about love at all costs. Now love at all costs means this. Put aside doctrines. That's the next one, right? Doctrines are, taught, uh, are either not taught or minimized. Now when you attend a church where it doesn't teach much doctrines, you know why? Because doctrines, they believe, divides. Doctrines divides. Is it not true? It is true. Truth always divides. It divides us from other religions. Truth always divides. Even within Christianity, truth will divide. So to them, not loving. Let's just put aside doctrine. See, doctrines divide. Let's just focus on love. Love. So first one. Now the second one, and therefore the most important doctrine is saving souls. Now, it is, well, don't talk about all these, these fundamentals of the faith. Just, just save souls. Just save souls. All right? That is the mentality. Saving souls is to make them know the truth. And after they know the truth, to live biblically, to separate from falsehood. That is the whole point of the Bible. But to them, just focus on salvation. That's why many of these churches... Sunday after Sunday, um, activities after activities are very focused on winning souls. Now, winning souls is not wrong. We need to focus a lot on winning souls. That is our great commission, all right? But for them, winning souls means do not bring up doctrines that are a problem. So, for example, well, if you go for mission trips together, uh, this is a new evangelical mindset, huh? we go for mission trip with anybody, as long as it is, it is to go there to win souls. And then, very often in this briefing, well, when you go there to win souls, yeah, you cannot talk about doctrines that may divide between Roman Catholics and Protestants, between modernists and evangelicals. You just go there, say, believe in Jesus and be safe. That is all. Don't, anything more than that, not good. Don't talk about it. Because the moment you talk about Roman Catholicism is a false gospel, then it's unloving, it's criticizing, it's judging. Just say, believe on Jesus, be saved. That is all. A, a shallow, incomplete gospel. Just as long as say, we believe in Jesus. Remember I said even for Billy Graham, all right, who, who passed away recently, and, and when he passed away, he was touted by the world Christian leaders as the, one of the greatest um, 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 evangelical, one of the greatest um, soul winner that Christendom um, have faced in our century. Why? Now, Billy Graham was also a fundamentalist, right? Now, over time, he also began to have a new evangelical mindset to the point where he said, when you win souls, 
So big stadium, he preached, believe in Jesus. Then they fill forms. I want to believe in Jesus. And their counsellors are taught this. If you, if they are Roman Catholics, just tell them to go back to the Roman Catholic Church. Right? That is all. So evangelism is, is the main doctrine that they want to focus. Don't talk about other doctrines that devise. All right? Now look at your BBK books. All other doctrines are either minimized or not taught. The mindset of joining hands with all denominations, regardless of doctrinal differences. Any denomination. Now, you notice something? Remember, in order for the ecumenical movement to succeed, the, the Protestant denominations must first unite. Whether you're liberal, whether you're, whether you're modernist, whether whatever, first is unite, unite, unite. That is all. Now, look at the next one. Um, um, peace, maintaining peace. Maintaining peace at all costs. This is another mindset. Maintaining peace at all costs. If this divides us from another BP church in Australia, in Singapore, in wherever, if this particular doctrine, for example, preservation, perfect preservation of the Word of God, if VPP divides us from other BP churches, then let's not talk about VPP. That is the new evangelical mindset. Please know that. If that is in your heart, then you must realize, oh no, I am now thinking like Harold Okenga. When I first came, um, I made it very clear. If I am not allowed to preach on the VPP, then I will not consider being a pastor here. All right? I made it very clear. I wrote my testimony. I had it posted up on your notice board, on the church notice board for weeks. And I made it very clear to the church leaders. If you say that I cannot preach this, then please don't invite me to be your pastor. Because the mentality in the churches, of the BP churches is, VPP has divided BP churches. It's not good. That is the new evangelical mindset. Then I have nothing to do with this church because you do not want to be evangelical. You want to be a new evangelical. So please understand all this mindset right as much as yes 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 but it came the time of renewing my 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 uh, my uh, contract with the church don't preach this and i said then then i will leave because it's a new evangelical mindset so please don't think that this mindset is not in the churches it's not in leaders of the churches any doctrine that divides just don't talk about this how can you don't talk about preservation of God's Word? The whole point about the Bible is that God's Word is perfect. If God's Word is not perfect, forget about preaching it. What is the point of being a Christian if God's Word is not perfect? Now here is, look at your Bible, uh, Bibles again, uh, your BBK books again. Maintaining peace. Maintaining peace. If you don't preach this, there will be peace with another church in Perth, another church in Brisbane, uh, in, in, um, in, in Adelaide, and so on. There will be peace. Can we don't talk about this? Whatever other things in your heart. Now, then move further. Um, because it is a mindset, it has infiltrated into the very heart of the most fundamental church without exception. Keep remembering this. Movements you can see. Does this church, is this church part of the World Council of Churches? You can go physically to the website. You can trace. You can see in there. Church of Christ in Australia. Many of you are friends in Church of Christ. You just check. They are, they are members of the World Council of Churches. You can see. But mindset, you cannot see. The person can be very evangelical, can be very evangelistic, can be very um, um, zealous, can be very um, loving, but it's a new evangelical. Now, when I was um, about to be pastor of this church, there was a group of people in this church that were new evangelicals. Basically, they were bringing materials from from. Um, other denominations that are unsound put up um, books and pamphlets in our church. They're not members, all right, but they were very active. They were, they were even given leadership position in this church. 
And I had to make a very clear stand about biblical separation, that we will not be part, neither will we support. All right? So they were, they were using our church resources, money, to support um, um, certain, certain um, um, organizations to give materials to them using our church money to print and so on. So I said, all this have to stop. We, we cannot use God's money to support this kind of uh, movements and this kind of churches. But they are very evangelistic. Please remember this. They will invite people, they will bring people. So, so the idea is they are very evangelistic. Then finally, this person asked me, all right, kind of like the leader of the group, asked me, well, you know, Reverend jo Joseph, you know, are you saying that um, this church from now onwards will be like that? And we were standing next to our church van and said, read the name of the church. It's a Bible Presbyterian Church of Western Australia. It's a Bible Presbyterian Church. Our constitution stands for biblical separation at all costs so that the truth will be known. We will not work with these bodies. And the person made a very interesting statement. Right? was fighting me for, for, for months, even years. Finally, the person dawned on the person and the person said this, then Reverend Joseph, I know, I know where I stand and I know what I need to do. And he even asked me this, so what do you consider me? I say, I consider you a new evangelical because you believe in the fundamentals of the faith, but yet you will work with, with organizations and you want the church to be part of other churches that are new evangelical. You are a new evangelical. And then the person said, well, then I know where I stand and left and a group of people left. You see, when the church is infiltrated with the new evangelical mindset, it will spread because the reason why it is so insidious, so dangerous, because it's a mindset. People who get saved, they are new, they will be infiltrated with the thinking, don't have biblical separation, work with any church, any doctrines that divides us, just don't talk about it, avoid it. That's it. It's all about love, all about winning souls, all about um, working together. That is all. Now, if I show you The new evangelical mindset. Oops. This is what it is. Science first. Pretty much like liberals and all. That is why he be, he, over time he believed in theistic evolution. God created by evolution. The social gospel. Social activism. All right? So you can have a very evangelical church. But the social gospel is, <clears throat> remember what it is? Use Christian ethics to change the world, in get involved in social activism, get involved in um, um, building schools, helping the poor, working with the drunkards, prisoners, and all that. But the main activity is not so much to win souls and to bring them to the truth. It is mainly social work, cooperative evangelism. Any group that, does, that focus on this, we will work with them. Unity is more important than the truth. That is why don't talk about doctrines that divide. Most important doctrine is evangelism, all right? But of course, this is false evangelism. True evangelism is always tell them the truth, take them out of the truth, and keep them in the truth, not infiltrate false groups. Infiltration, not separation. That is the mentality. Minimize doctrines, of course. That's why churches that are new evangelical are generally very weak in doctrines because it's mainly about working with people, some form of Christianity, that is all. Doctrines always divide. And it is already in many fundamental churches today. Today. So please don't think that all BPs are BPs. There are many new evangelicals in the church leadership as well. You must be able to spot the mentality. Ask yourself, am I like that? If I've been like that, means I have been changed by the new evangelical mindset. It is dangerous. I need to now do what is right, all right? So the new evangelical mindset, very dangerous, very dangerous. Young ones, I hope you understand what I'm teaching here. If you are not careful, you will be like that. Why is our church like that? Why don't we have friends? We have plenty of friends. It's just that you don't like them, that's all. Now, so I ask a few questions, which we'll answer next week. Now, what about, what about the Bible tells us? Well, love 
You know, God is love. What about the what about Christ say? Well, I pray for the unity of Christians. Christ prayed for unity. Now, how do you answer that? Now, what about the Bible saying, don't judge? Why are we judging all these things? You know, the Bible says, don't judge in Matthew, in Romans. Don't judge. You're not supposed to judge. Worst of all, why must you bring up names? Well, Harold or Kanga, Billy, Graham, and all sorts of names. Why must you bring up names? It's unloving. It's critical. It's judgmental. Don't bring up names, right? Now, all this kind of thinking, maybe you have them in your heart. Now, what about, what about, they are also winning souls. They are also helping young Christians. They're also reaching out to them. What about that? Yeah, what about that, all right? So, next week, God willing, we want to answer all this so that in your heart you are clear why God says biblical separation and not infiltration. It will destroy you. It will destroy the church. Let us pray. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts, uh, what church dropouts say, why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from